G'day guys and welcome to Redriven. Now with the recent announcement that Lotus are going to be wrapping up production of their current lineup of cars, we thought it only fitting to pay tribute to the back catalogue with this our Redriven top 5 Lotuses, L Loti? Lotus? Lotuses? Our top 5 Lotuses of all time. But there is a disclaimer. This is the top five Lotus road cars or production cars. So no race cars, no concept cars, just the cars that you and I could go and buy from showrooms. So here are our top five Lotuses of all time. Actually, before we get into this, Please know that this was an incredibly tough list to put together. We got in touch with a whole bunch of Lotus fans and Lotus experts and the top fives they sent back to us were all dramatically different. Lotus have such a huge array of brilliant cars in their back catalogue. But when you get to the end of this video, we want to know what you think. Let us know what makes up your top five. But as always, let's start in fifth place. It's the Lotus Exige. Based on this Series 1 Elise, the original Exige arrived in 2000. But for this top five, the Exige we favor is the Series 2, and in particular, the Exige S from 2006. There were literally dozens of special edition Series 2 Exiges to choose from, and a special mention must go to the epic Series 3 Exiges, in particular, the current Sport 410. But for us, it's the Series 2 S that really set itself apart from its Elise base. As Lotus said at the time, the Exige S represents the ultimate extreme production Lotus, with performance that trumps other supercars costing twice or even three times as much. In fourth place, it's the Lotus that is considered the embodiment of the brand's performance through low weight and simplicity philosophy. It's simply the Seven. It may not have been the very first Lotus, but it is the car that arguably set the standard for everything that followed. Designed by Lotus founder Colin Chapman way back in 1957, the 7 is actually still in production today. The tiny, light, tubular frame chassis has hardly changed over its near 65 year history, but the 7 has seen a host of different power plant configurations. Officially, the 7 is built by Caterham these days, but a host of other companies and even blokes in their sheds are welding and bolting together versions of the 7, all to become one with driving. In third place, it's another heritage model. It's the 1963 to 1974 Lotus Alan. A front-engined rear-wheel drive layout in a tiny, incredibly light and gorgeous body with soft compliant suspension and just the right amount of power built on the genius of Colin Chapman's folded steel backbone chassis is what set the Alan apart from anything that had come before it. In particular, we love the Sprint from 1970, and even compared to some of today's performance cars, the Elan is just simply sublime to drive. And if it wasn't for the Elan, we might not have the MX-5, and even the thought of that makes me very sad. In second place, it is the Esprit, but which Esprit? Well, the Series 1 is obviously iconic, but it's the Series 3 Turbo where they really got the recipe right. If it's good enough for James Bond, then it's good enough for the rest of us. The Esprit in general marked the moment that Lotus became a manufacturer of supercars willing to take on the likes of Ferrari and Porsche. But it's the Series 3 Turbo with not only more power, but a host of other improvements that gave Lotus a car that could seriously take on the competition. The stunning Jujario design and ingenious backbone chassis were honed and adjusted over the years, and while the Esprit was initially acclaimed for its handling, early models were a bit underdone when it came to power. While you'd expect such an exotic looking car to have a V8 or even a V12 powering it, early Esprits were propelled by a 2 litre 4 cylinder, which in the lightweight Esprit was fine, but increase that displacement to 2.2 litres, bolt on a turbo, and all of a sudden you have a genuine contender. Before we get to number one, can you please do us a favor and click those like, subscribe, and bell icons, and hey, why not go and follow us on all the socials as well? And finally, in first place, it's the Elise. But which Elise? Look, they are all brilliant. From the recent Series 3 Cup 260 to the Series 2 SC and 111S, every Elise has taken its lightweight mid-engine layout, double wishbone suspension all around, and immensely rigid bonded together aluminium chassis, and delivered an incredible driving experience. But we do have to pick just one to top our top five. And look, it's, it's an incredibly tough call, but for us, it's the Series 1 Sport 190. The Sport 190 received more power and torque, upgraded tyres and brakes, and revised suspension, giving the already awesome and now iconic Series 1 platform even more agility and just enough poke to make things seriously fun. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. And as I said at the top of the video, please jump on the comments section and let us know what your top five lotuses of all time are. And make sure you hit those like, subscribe, and bell buttons. And hey, go and follow us on all the socials as well. See you next time.